Fest was the North American premiere of Le Paradis, The Lost Boys, and what a privilege to welcome back to the Castro stage director, writer Zino Graton, and the men who play William, Julien de Saint Jean. Bravo, bravo. Thank you again so much uh, for bringing your film to Frameline and for being here uh, to enjoy. Uh, so this is the first time you're seeing, maybe you're seeing a non-French speaking audience. I don't mean to be rude, but probably most of you are reading the subtitles like me. Um, do you sense any difference, first of all, with an American audience uh, watching your film? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's like, I don't know, I, I don't really watch the movie. There I stayed a little bit from four parts because it's such a beautiful room and of course it's uh, San Francisco. I don't know. Uh, no, I felt I felt you. I, I felt the. I don't know. But we, we, we screened it in like German audiences, uh -huh. uh, you know, different languages, and it's. I don't know. You'll 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 tell us. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm so curious. Uh, as you know, you're from Belgium uh, yeah. originally, and and. Um, Tell us a little bit about the origin of the story, why you set it in this, um, in this, in a correctional facility, and um, yeah, sure. kind of the genesis of, of the story to begin with. Well, the Lost Boys was was born because of different things kind of mixing up in my head. Like, I guess first was the fact that my cousin was placed in those in those you know places uh, when we were teenagers, so I could ex kind of experience the words he was going through and you know the dysfunctional you know things about those places and also the kind of the despise of uh, you know my family and also society uh, towards those kids um, and it I kind of grew inside of me a sense kind of, of empathy and I wanted to you know to humanize also those 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 kids uh, but I would say that also there's you know a lot about Jean Genet in there, um, Jean Genet was uh, a French writer who wrote a, a lot about uh, love in prison, and you know, also very a political writer. You know, okay, are you okay? <laughs> Barack always up with the camera. We don't want to lose a photographer. Um, no, so Jean Genet is a very you know erotic but also very tender you know writer, very flamboyant also. Very political, like I said, and those things kind of started to mix up. Uh, I really wanted to first, you know, direct a love story uh, between two teenagers, um, and maybe with the thinking of that there wouldn't be any inhibition uh, inside of them towards what they were feeling to each other, because I was often seeing when I was a kid, or most of my more teenager, or you know, when I was in my twenties, I was seeing films about. Uh, coming out and about uh, you know the only arc was about overcoming this this inner inhibition and I felt maybe there was time to really portray a, a generous love story maybe a more universal love story where the question of the uh, homosexuality was not at, a, at the core of the movie but then we could open up some new conflicts about those stories. Um, voilà, so. Yeah, no, but that's exactly what felt so fresh to me about your screenplay is because uh, the typical, even the Jean Genet style prison love story is about um, inhibition, it is about forbidden, uh, forbidden love, um, and and you really dispensed with that and started really with this immediate, um, not just attraction but real um, romance and love in a in a very un Unlikely setting, but I guess I was very inspired by by the youth. I guess like by you know by this new generation that doesn't excuse themselves for for loving who they love, and you know they are not my generation because. But I, I felt very uplifted in a way by their freedom, and uh, yeah, I guess it, yeah. So Julian, congratulations on a beautiful, beautiful performance. <laughs> Uh, 
So William is a is a kid who seems incredibly intense. There's a big inner life going on, except he doesn't have a lot of dialogue to express that. So um, tell us a little bit about how you entered into his life and how you began to tell your own story of what his background was, what his crime or his his problems were that he brought with him into this place. Yeah, I got maybe like six lines of text, so in the film, That's not true. maybe ten, I don't know. And yeah, I mean, there was like the challenge of the film, how to tell a world with just like a, an eye contact, a touch, a smile, a little something on your face. I mean, like, Zeno is really uh, poetic in a way. He wanted to make a, f a fable, it doesn't make sense, but yeah, a fable and like, um, since like, we were shooting, like um, all the scenes were in the same uh, uh, space. We were like doing like um, I would say uh, like the everyday life and how to tell like a bigger a bigger thing uh, just with the eye contact. And I mean like uh, I've watched a lot of films and we talked a lot with Zeno about the role. And when I read the script at first, uh, well, we talked about the role and we said like. Uh, Maybe William is the more um, sensible uh, character in the film. Like, when you feel something, it's just extreme. If it's passion, it's extreme. If it's sad, it's anger and stuff like this. And because, like, in, in the prison movies, when I was younger, there was, like, a representation of uh, the guys there, like, uh, the most manly rocks. You can't cry. You can't express your feelings. And with that character, we wanted to maybe show all the... The uh, alternatives. Yeah, alternative. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you mentioned in the introduction that you actually were shooting in this facility where you were just a few meters away from the boys who were actually uh, detained. Um, did you did you do research with them? I mean, did you talk with them? Like, what's your life like? Why are you here? Actually, uh, with Khalil, the other actor, we wanted to go in that in those uh, detention general facilities because because um, we somehow like uh, we didn't know really how what how it uh, happened there. So we went like for two days in this uh, facility where Zino actually wrote and where for immersion to write his script and. One of the first conversations we had with some guys, we said, oh, we're gonna do a movie about uh, you, about the, 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 the space, and uh, um, tell us, and not what the educators or the director say about uh, the kids. Like, we wanted to make that the most, uh, I would say, near from them. And a guy just told us, like, uh, he didn't believe us that we were doing a film. He said, like, uh, people from outside world doesn't care about what we feel here, what we are. And that sentence um, made us all the... I, will, I felt that it, I, we were doing something important, in a way. Do, have, you, yeah, have you had a chance to show it to any um, populations that are incarcerated? Um, so uh, whether the place where you shot at or somewhere else? So what happened during the premiere in, uh, in a city in Belgium, that was near this fa the facility that I was uh, researching. That I that I I, I spent uh, two months there to to try to you know be close to them. We got the authorization from the state. It was very very interesting. So we were premiering the film, you know, avant première, like premiering in the in one of those cities near that. And one of the educators came with their kids uh, as a. As, a, as an outdoor activity, right, a field trip, yeah, <laughs> to the cinema, and you know they were they, they they gifted us with the present. We we of course warned them that the movie was going to be out, and you know we wanted to do something with them. But before you know we could even have mail exchanges, you know they would come to the premiere um, with not all of the kids, but some of them, and it was a, it was very interesting. And I was, I was talking with them in the after that, and it really warmed my heart, and it was like a full circle, you know, and we talked a little, little bit with the kids who were really interested. Um, the, the, the facility that we shot in, we want to, to project it, but uh, they kind of keep postponing it because a lot of things, they're, they're, 
there, there may be an underlying uh, homosexual problems about this, but yeah, I was even though they left to shoot that and everybody knew, but on the sets, um, I mean, I don't know why they keep postponing it, but they, they say it's about the fact that it's very nervous at the moment at the facility, which I also kind of believe, but then. Um, but during the shooting, uh, they would come, the, the kids would come on the sets by group of three or four, kind of every day, to witness what it was like to make a movie, to be behind the camera, and we talked about it, and they had a, little workshops with the actors when they were not playing, and we were working a little bit on the lights or some stuff. So we, we tried to, you know, be a part of their life um, in a way that we would not be colonizer of this space and just making our thing and then go back. So yeah, we, we tried to make as much links as possible. Yeah, but you say you, you the, the the people who ran the facility and maybe even the um, the people the, the kids who were detained there they were aware that you were making a gay story um, to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Yeah, but so that's what I was witnessing when I was uh, in immersion there. It's that they are first um, detainees, and every identity that comes after that kind of doesn't matter because they kind of create this sense of brotherhood, this kind, this sense of resistance also towards the institution. So they need to be bonded. So I, I, I you know, I talked about that with them, and and surprisingly, they they were not homophobic uh, as much as I thought they were and they kind of taught me a lot about kind of tolerance and acceptance because they are they are at the lower lowest bar of the social scale so they don't want to I don't they can't go lower so they, they really go together well it seemed really important for you too um, and with your co-star Khalil to bring out um, the ethnic or racial diversity as well, and you've got this beautiful kind of North African-inspired score, and so I wanted to have ask you sort of how that's obviously intentional with the casting of of Joe. Did you imagine already from the beginning that you were writing a character who was yeah, that's North American, yeah. African descent? And tell us about the, how you incorporate the music that way as well. So, well, I'm half Tunisian, and my you know my family on you know on one side of my my family was really targeted with, with institutional racism in a way. Not in a way, but completely. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the justice system is really rooted in those colonial, I mean, in Europe, is in these colonial, you know, aspects of it. And nobody, you know, anybody is not treated the same, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it was important for me for the beginning to, to put uh, an Arab character as the main role to, to talk about that, but to not put it as the main thing of the movie, but just for it to be there and to make a statement. But also, in, in regard of queer cinema, it was very important for me to have a main queer Arab character uh, who would be a subject of his of his uh, life, of his desires, of his motion, and not an object of uh, victimization or exotization, like you see a lot. And for me, in in, uh, in queer movies, every time you see an Arab character, it's because he's being exot exoticized or victimized. Um, and you know, queer identity and Arab identity are often two things that are very separated very problematic, but I know a lot of Catholic white uh, families that have, you know, a very big problem with homo homosexuality, you know, it's not, it's not about, you know, race, you know, like, that, there is no, for me, link about that. And with the music, we, we, we worked with, um, with a Lebanese composer that I really loved before willing even to work with him, and then we, we, we started to think about the music, and for me, the music arrived as a way to portray the roots of, of Joe without talking too much about it and making you feel it in another level of, of, of emotion than through music. And we worked a lot about um, uh, the, char the character of Rumi, who's a Persian poet, for, yeah, for, for, from the from the middle age, like uh, 1,014, 1, 400, something like that. And Rumi was what is a very important queer Arab figure in the in the Arab world because uh, his writings 
were a lot about the body and the connection with God through dance and through, you know, through the body and being connected with God in almost a sexual way. And all his writing inspired uh, one of the branch of Islam called Sufism. And uh, for me, it was perfect to, you know, to, to try to work on that. And all the singing you hear is about Rumi's poems. Um, you know, also bringing love in a more sacred space, um, bringing this love with between two guys in a universal sacred space where, you know, we, er, anyone can, can, I wanted er, anyone to relate to this because when two people come together, it's, it's, it's sacred. Yeah, well, and it's one, I mean, I, I love the title of Lost Boys, which makes me think of, um, uh, you know, Lord of the Flies or any kind of um, Peter, Pan. Uh, Peter Pan, but it loses a little bit the beautiful irony of your f original French title of, of par Paradise, because this this irony of this place being very forbidding, forbidding or difficult, and yet they find a certain kind of of love. Um, but Julien, I wanted to ask you. Um, you I, it's just amazing that you have these two films that. Uh, at Frameline, out at the same time, two very different performances. Um, you're still a really young actor. I know you have a few credits beforehand, but it feels like this is a kind of a big year for you. Are you feeling now that these two films are out in Europe that you're um, you're getting offered new roles? Um, I'm just so curious, what's 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 up next for you, if you know yet? Yeah, because actually, like, Lie With Me and The Lost Boys was was my two first films for cinema. Um, it was because I had the audition at the same time, I, I was called back at the same time, and and actually for this movie, The Lost Boys, uh, you know, like, you do tape to send, and you, they see maybe, like, 100 or four boys, and I don't know, and, like, when I was doing the tape with my friend, I told him, I don't know why, but this movie is for me, like this role is for me. Because I, I felt the connection, I knew there was something special with this character, and I, I was not wrong <laughs> in a way. Because I'm so proud of, of Zeno, of his work. Um, he's so nice and, and talented, and, I, and it was like the greatest shooting I've done. Like, it was great. And maybe I'm gonna have like new roles next, next uh, but like, uh, we'll see in the future. <laughs> right, well, well, we know you're gonna have new roles in the future, this is not, not an issue at all. I got no <laughs> Yes, movies coming up and it doesn't talk about it. Yeah, so oh, well, uh, yeah, I'm shooting a couple of films, some are <laughs> He's high on the happiness yeah. from you guys. <laughs> um, you, you, <laughs> it's good. You can answer or not answer this question, but uh, but it's, it, it is unusual for a young actor to have two big roles, two gay roles, in at the same time. And I'm wondering if you or your agent, your management, your your family, yourself wonder like, oh, is this going to type typecast me? And this is not a question about your your own identity, but simply the fact of the the range of roles. Yeah, I know. Like um, when I got the roles, I really hesitated. At first, I, I was going to do just one. Because, of course, like nowadays, uh, you can be typecast. And when you're a young actor, you don't want you, you're an actor because you want to do so many different roles. But like, I wanted to be an actor since I was eight. And I got finally the opportunity to do what I've always dreamt of. So I said, like, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. And I think now um, there is like, so much, uh, so many like, presentation of queer and different um, roles. And so now, um, I think it's different from like 10 years ago. And I think uh, we need to uh, change this mentality, the producers, the directors, the, the industry of cinema. And I think I'm, I'm so pleased to have done these two movies. I would have been uh, really sad to not experience this in a way. Exactly. So I'm really happy. Thank you, Julia. similar sort of future looking question for you Zeno as it is kind of amazing this is your first um, this is your feature debut it's such an accomplished beautiful tonally um, very deep uh, film and so um, even though it's on the beginning of its journey I'm sure you have stories or things that you want to be doing next um, 
do you do you have a sense of where you're going or if I mean, some people, they look at their films and they can only see the mistakes. They can only hear the, ah, I wish we... And so I don't know if that's your, your feeling with this and you're de determined to make a new film next um, and fix those things. No, uh, I, I really want to work more, uh, of course. And uh, but the journey of this film, you know, as you said, has just kind of begun. So I feel still connected to it in a, in a very deep emotional level that doesn't allow a lot of space to, to fill myself with other stories or to express them. Uh, but yeah, we, we explored, you know, masculinity, the, the, the freedom, the love, and those are huge uh, things that were in my head at the moment, and I kind of have to cleanse myself a little bit <laughs> before putting something else um, yeah, but That's definitely why you're in San Francisco during Pride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, staying, yeah. I'm staying here for one month to kind of walk in the parks, in the national parks, and just to free my head. That was for you. It's my first time in California. I was like, I'm going to go uh, walk around. Um, that sounds very um, liberating in its own way, and hopefully, maybe your next film, in some maybe unconscious way, will will, will bring something of your month in California um, back onto the screen. Um, Zeno and Julian, we're so honored that you're here. Thank you for sharing your beautiful work. Congratulations.